me. Uh, have we heard that before? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Amen. Amen. Now can okay. We can always hear you, Pastor. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> where did we where did we just hear that from? Who just who just made that statement a few verses before? Oh dang, I was hoping I didn't have any Bible scholars in here. Isn't that interesting? Martha just said this. In studying this the way we've been going through, this is very interesting. That's why I told you earlier to, to Hold on to that, and you would keep it because you're going to need it. You're going to need the word in today's time. Amen? Amen. It would not be uh, pulled from you when you're going through this. And this is interesting. And just, come on, Jim. You didn't cook me up. John 11, 28 through 32. And how would you approach Jesus? We, we, we see how Mary and Martha approached him. But let's get off them. We've seen their story. How would you approach Jesus? Just think about that. How would you approach him? We saw how Mary approached him. We saw how Martha approached him. Now let's ask ourselves, how would you approach Jesus? How do you approach Jesus daily? So 1128, do you remember who Jesus used to call you out secretly? This was so powerful for me. Mary and Martha, sisters. Jesus weren't their friend. And yet when we sit down and we've been going through this, and you think about this, and I just want to know, and you ought to give reference to that person right now that popped in your mind. Who was the one that came to you? Too many times you get so much people in your ear, everybody coming. But if you can't quantify who was the person that came to you secretly and said, that teacher, and was specific about that person named Jesus, who came to you? Who helped you come to know Christ? You didn't do it on your own. Amen. Sometimes we forget. I was like, wow, this is interesting how Jesus using Martha at this time in Mary, and both of them were saved. It wasn't that Martha and Mary both were not saved. We've been talking about that, but one was loud and obnoxious, and one was very quiet, docile, didn't really say much. And you got to figure out where's your personality. Come on. And when she look at this, and when she had said these things, she went her way, and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Man, this is powerful. She didn't just run in there and tell everybody. And it's interesting because these were friends and family. They were all over at the house consoling them because who had just died? Come on, we got to keep on and make sure you get. We've been walking through this slowly because now you can see. And I'm like, and I kept saying, why would she do that secretly? They're all there. They all know Jesus. We're all in church, packed house. We all know Jesus. So why would I come to you privately and secretly and share something with you? That teacher that you've been talking about. Come on. So I want you to, the first thing, this is how this blew me away. There will always be a messenger in your life. Amen. Amen. You call whatever you want to call it. You think you go out here on your own, but there will always be a messenger. What stirred this up? When did you start spending a lot of time with Jesus? It's interesting. You can talk all that. I go to church. I'm so tired. What's that mean? I go to church. Oh, I'm going to go to church. I want to know some personal things. I want to know who the messenger is. I want come on. What stirred it up? What, what made Martha take off running? Because Jesus hadn't come to the house yet. What made one take off running? And what made one just sit back and wait? And I know he's going to come. And yet both of them said the same thing. If you have been here. It was so powerful. We missed that. Whether you're alive or not, they both said the same thing. If you had been here, Lord. So you got to figure
figure out your personality and how God has cut you and how God has stirred you up. And then it's interesting, is Jesus, and this is what messed folk up, is he a theory, a doctrine, or is it personal to you? And brothers, I am telling you, so many folk get caught in the first two and they never get to the last piece. That's why I struggle with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's why I struggle. I call them church folk in today's time. In 2024, we got a whole lot of church folk. They'll tell you church doctrine. They'll give you theory, but they can't give you nothing personal. Oh, they can't. They can't quantify when it came into your life, but they say don't drink, don't smoke, don't sleep. I don't need you to tell me that. I know all that, but when did he come into your life? And stop you from drinking, smoking, cussing, gang. Come on now. I want to know some personal. I don't need documents there. I know all that. I want to know when he came to you personally. And who are you taking over from now? That's what Stephanie told me. That's what Kevin told me. Both of them told me, walk up to baptism. You know, I've learned this, but man. Stephanie said something to me months ago before she got here. It was so powerful. One day she just came, she said, you know, coming out of study, she said, she said, Pastor Smith, why are you talking about me every message? Hey, hey. <laughs> Some of you are worried about who you're talking about. But she came and I said, ooh, I said, oh, that's a good thing, huh? Because you're here. We're going to get through this. So why are you talking about me every message? It's like, and then she said this. You remember the conversation? It's like you are following me. See, when that's when you know God is working in your life, it's like you are following me. You know stuff. I'm like, hey, I don't, honey, I'm just preaching the word of God. And if it makes you, hey, thank be to God, because there's been a whole lot of folk who sit in church and ain't heard nothing from God. Amen. Amen. Uh, they've heard something to go tell their spouse. They've heard something to go tell their kids. They've heard something to go tell other family members and friend and co-worker, but they never heard anything for themselves. So that day, she started saying, I'm ready to take orders from him now. Amen? Amen. I played long enough. And Kevin said something to me, too, because they both go together. I've been eating on this one. Kevin said, no, Pastor. The reason why was the first time I went down, I went for mama. I went for grandmother. I went for granddaddy. I went for everybody else. But this time, I'm going down because I know who he is. I know what he's done. And get out of this place. You got to know what he's done for you. I didn't get enough for everybody else, but this time it's for me. Yes. And I want the whole world to know. Brother John, he touched the water. <laughs> ah, I'm going to forget that song last week. He touched the water. And every now and then, you got to realize in the shower, wherever you are, that God touched the water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The second thing, now we can ready to get out of here. It ain't have to be long because all this is coming together. 11 and 29. What are you hearing from others? I told them, life is getting ready to start now. The enemy has a way. Yes. And remember, the enemy is family, friends, and co-workers. So you think it was in Russia. But I realized that a lot of the enemies were coming after Jesus because they said to Mary and Martha, this Jesus that you love, where is he? I'll tell you where he is. He didn't beckon it. And it shouldn't have took him four days to get here. Come on now. They said it shouldn't have took. See, they trying to get at you. See, they don't want you to come to the king. They want you to stay broke, busted, and disgusted. They want you to, they don't, they're not excited. They're not shouting with you. They trying to wait till you make a mistake to throw a rock at you. I'm here today to say, I'm hearing from something different now. I'm tired of listening to what everybody else said. I know what I used to be. I know what I used to do. I know where I came from. But today I'm hearing a different voice. And as soon as she heard that, -wee, she arose quickly and came to him. 
Uh, some of you, come on now. You've been listening to, come on. You can't hear God because you keep hearing Pastor Smith. And I keep telling you, I'm the under shepherd. I'm just getting what the chief shepherd. And every now and then, you got to quit looking at everybody else and look inside yourself. Why was God speaking to me so clear today? Come on. Woo. Aren't you glad today that you got ears to hear? Ah, amen, Sister Jenny. But well, that was some time. From 13 to 32, I sat in church, but I didn't have ears to hear. Because I'm telling you right now, I did it. I please, I went on, even to find it as sin is only when you get caught. Junior deacon to senior deacon, come on now. Minister, come on. And you playing around. It ain't sin unless they catch you. Ears to hear what? What do you want to hear? The gospel. And I try to make it really plain today. This is the gospel. Real plain, Gideon. That's why we ain't got to have a whole lot. What's the gospel? That we are sinners that need a savior. That's what you got to realize. We're all sinners. And we need you, Lord. Not now, but right now. I don't know where I would be, what I'd be doing, if you wouldn't walk with me daily. And I want to make it plain. Jesus Christ is that Savior. Not mama, not daddy, not the preacher, not what's on the name of the church, not all that other stuff. Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is that Savior. Amen. And why do you got to hold on to it? Remember I said to you early in the thing, why do you got to hold on to this? Because for years, I allowed others to hinder my progress from walking into newness in Christ. Because, man, you know your ugliness. Amen. You know what you used to do. Amen. Come on. Amen. And the enemy is good at keeping you from walking in your newness. Amen. Other ones going to tell you. And you're going to say, you ain't got to tell me. I know how bad I was. But I'm walking in my newness. If you thought that was bad, follow me now. <laughs> See, you follow me then, but follow me now. Because I'm in my newness. I'm making progress. I'm walking for the Lord. I love him with all my heart. Lord, I come on, help me, Lord. And every now and then, I realize my biggest problem is I get caught up in myself. Yes, sir. And it's personal. Mm. Way entirely too much. Mm. Amen? Amen. So we have to be like John, this book. You can't. He jumped on me. Oh. I ain't ready yet. Hinder your progress slash walk in your newness in Christ. And I told Kevin and Stephanie when we had our said, now remember, you got to, I'm just using them because they just got, you got to walk in your newness. Mm -hmm. You understand that? I didn't say walk in your profession. That's, right. That's going to happen on that great getting up morning. Woo! But walk in your newness. And what's that mean? I'm, I'm, I heard nobody in the prayer today, Sister Lauren. And Sister Lauren's on fire for the Lord. But you heard what she said. What a powerful prayer. I want to give him my first fruits. I want to talk to him in the morning and at night. Come on, through the day. I want to just consult with you, Lord. I want to walk with you. And I'm going to go into a meeting when I see racism, when I see this kind of ism, when I see all this stuff. Lord, I want to walk in with you. I want you to cover me. Because if you ain't covering me, who? I'm going to make it too personal. Right, right. And I'm going to mess up my newness. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because it's going to look like I'm walking right back in my oldness. Wow, wow. Come on. And then this is what started shifting, 30 and 31, the quiet one. Mm. Every now and then, we need a whole lot more Marys. Got a whole lot of Marthas in churches today. Ready to run that mouth. <laughs> Challenging everything. Debating everything. And then God to show us. Both of them were saved. But I know Pastor Yates, we kind of, I guarantee we'd like a whole lot more Marys. And I just want to make it plain to you, because both of them was good. Martha was a doer, and we need them. But man, Mary always picked. And I didn't understand that for years. I probably messed it up. Pick the good part. Come on now. She was never in a hurry. Come on now. She was quiet. She was docile. Always paying.
paying attention, looking at everything. Come on, keep on. Come on, look at this, look at this. Now Jesus had, come, had, had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Now remember Martha's, we know her story. Always trying to get ahead of the narrative, getting out there, wanting to bait her, wanting to talk about a lot of stuff, talking about things that don't even remember. Now let's go back. Let's go back so we can catch a pick. Remember when she tried to get her sister, her beloved sister, in trouble? Said, Jesus, I'm telling on. Yeah. I'm telling on Mary today. We knew you was coming, and she didn't help me fix a meal. Bake a cake, clean the house. All she did was get herself ready for you to come. And this is crazy because sometimes I miss the key points. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, why trouble yourself? You gotta know the word of God. So why trouble yourself? Basically, you are troubling yourself over things that mean nothing to the kingdom of God. Mary has always learned something that we need to learn. She always picked the good part. And so what's the good part? And we finally learned it. Every chance she had, nothing came in the way, Lord, of her sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I missed that for years. All the other things that get in the way, and that's why we have such a troubled spirit. Because we don't take a marriage to the Lord. We don't take the rent of a kid. I'm a walking. We don't buy a car, buy a house. We edit all the stuff we try to put on our own backs versus take it to the Lord. Because some of us don't want to hear what he has to say. And then the Jews who were with her in the house. That's why he said secretly. You know about them Jews? Come on now. Everybody in your circle ain't for you. Because now you catch the story. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw that Mary rose quickly and went out and followed her, saying, she is going to the tomb to weep there. <laughs> Run your mouth. <laughs> Thinking you know something that you don't know. Deacon's over here. Trusty's over here. Come on. Lame people over here. Church women's over here. <laughs> Come on, you got to make a plane today. Everybody, and you don't even have a clue. Because it wasn't for everybody at that time. Amen. It was for her. Mm -hmm. That teacher. And you know what? That Mary's slick. I mean, Martha is slick. Because remember now, Sarah, she's going to be in sarcastic. You know, that passive aggressive. Because she said, that teacher. Come on now, you got to catch these words. That teacher you've been talking about, Mary, the one you're sitting at the feet, that teacher wants to see you. Okay. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> now remember, they said the same thing. Martha said it way before Mary said it. If you had been here, that's why you got to, if you had been here. But boys, Come on, Dee. I'm so excited for you, Stephanie. You heard the call. He calls for you. <laughs> he calls for you. The quiet one. The overlooked one. The one who is not very important. That was crazy because I got to reading all this stuff about Mary and going through like, wow. There was one part in the section that didn't even say her name. Remember, I told y'all didn't even say her name. So sometimes you gotta realize Jesus knows what he's doing. You might think you're being overlooked. It doesn't, it wasn't even about her at this time. It was all Martha. You going through your stuff, and it seemed like everybody's overlooking you, and you just can't get it right. You didn't get the promotion. Come on, everything's happening, and you can't figure it out. And you want to oh, don't get loud, don't run your mouth, just be there, be still, and know. It's one of my favorite Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know, and I will exalt thee throughout the heavens and the earth. So now we all know about Mary. Come on now, the quiet one. The one that did every opportunity was sitting at his feet. Wasn't cooking the chicken. Wasn't known for her cakes. Wasn't known for all this stuff. She was known for cooking the good part. And baby, come on, let's get real. 
Who wants to be known for sitting in his feet? Not until you, all right, come on, y'all won't walk with me. Nobody wants to be known until life hits you. And remember what I read earlier. And don't let it leave you. Because Mary knew. And what she said was different than how Martha said it. Yeah. And yet they both were saved. I don't want you to think Martha. They both were saved. One just was real paying close attention to everything. Come on, getting it all. Gathering it all. Sitting at his feet. Now we're going to go home. Come on. <laughs> so now we can go home. Let's make this personal. Are you ready to fall at his feet yet? I wish I could get there. I didn't go begging and crying, Stephanie. I told her she called me one day. I thought she was ready to box me. Uncle Cece, you know she coming. Can I see you for a minute? It's the sun. I'm like, okay. What do I do? Okay, caught me coming out. He said, I just, I, and she was serious. You always talking about me every Sunday. And Kyle was like, huh? I started looking back at my messages. Wait a minute. What I'm talking about her? I'm being up there. Well, that's a good thing. She was ready to fall at his feet. I was like, I'm So I told her, she was ready to fall at his feet. I didn't been enough. I'm tired. And then she gave me the song. So, oh, wow. But you guess what? Her and her sister started coming. I don't even know how long it's been now. Quietly. She's been in church all her life. She just started coming. I guess after a couple, I can't even remember. How long have you been coming here now? A couple years. Year, two. So they just start coming. See, they was quiet. They come in and try and do this. She said, I just got to figure some stuff out. That's what the song was talking about. Come on, bam. Now I can be used once I figure out who I am in God. Oh, y'all going to walk with me. I'm sitting at his feet now. Now I'm ready, Pastor. I'm ready to be used. I'm sitting at his feet. I want to be used for the kingdom. i got some gifts. i got some talent. I've just been using it for the world. See, they got to talk here. I've got some gifts. Kevin said, I came in 20 years ago, and I sold dope. And now I'm bringing hope of the same Christ that changed me from the inside of hell. It's the same Christ that can change you. And he told the story. And hope's always better than dope. Because yeah, yeah. dope won't last long. That's why you got to keep going. Hope lasts forever. Because you're going to hold on to it. Now hope's in Jesus. The solid rock. Anchored in him. I can go home. Come on, D. And then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him. And look what she did again. And she fell down at his feet. This is what messed me up. Because when we first were reading this, we thought Mary was what? Licking her wounds, feeling sorry for herself. See, that's why you gotta work the text, Pastor. Yeah, it messed me up. Because when we first saw that, and y'all remember that Sunday, God turned it right when I was preaching. Because it looked like roles had reversed. And they never will. God just had to show up. And show out four days later. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I got a whole lot of Martha too. Always trying to get ahead, Tiffany of God. We talked the other day. You can't get ahead of you can't get ahead of God. I've been thinking what Tiffany asked at that meeting. What's real membership? I've been praying, meditating, writing some stuff down because that was a powerful question. Because if I was to give all y'all what's membership. You see that? Is that two times a month? Three times a month? What's the, if your faithful tithe will never come, you remember because you're giving? <laughs> she had some good stuff. That's why I like business, me, because stuff came out, some feelings was hurt, but at the end of the day, it all gets together because I'm not afraid of it. And you start to see it came back and saying, at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And it was coming from a different place, a place of reverence. Where Martha, who was saved, came from a different place, a place of debating. Not all the way in, very hesitant, trying to still figure it out. And yet they both said the same thing. Come on. Every time in the Gospels, we witness Mary at Jesus' feet. And why do you do that? 
There's three things that we got to learn. Baby, what up? I went crazy when he gave me these nuggets right here. I'm always in position to learn these things. Learning from him. Worshiping him. And serving him. And every time I get out of that passage, every time I get away from those three things, Deacon, every time I get away, Donald Wayne Smith steps in and messes up the gospel. And I am telling you, that's why I love the fresh anointing. I didn't know where this was ending, and God just kept working. And they said, what was going on? What was different with Mary and Martha? They both were saved. And then it said, because she learned from him. And every opportunity, she didn't miss an opportunity. She was never in a hurry. She was at Sunday school. She was at Bible study. She was reading her word. Worshiping him. Wow. You can't pick and choose. Y'all remember when John first came in here? This church had seemed like four eyes. Mm -hmm. John didn't say a word. John's a quiet boy. Now, some of you been here, man, John got this beautiful voice. Ja, come on. John almost had a near death experience. You know, you look at all the stuff John done shared with me, and now God look at got a beautiful voice. I'm like, man, talking about all the different things, how much his wife prayed for him to come, and then he heard one day himself, and ain't come on, and ain't missed a Sunday. And he told his story. Didn't come for 20, 30 years, and now I won't miss it. But God, come on now. I'm learning to worship him. You got to see it. I'm learning to worship him. I didn't have it all right. Things were going crazy. I was messed up. And then I started worshiping him through the good and the bad. Yeah. And finally, at the feet serving him, if I learned to humble myself, you know how humbling that is? To bow down at the feet of somebody? I said every time Mary, we all want to tell how Alabaster Box when she sings that song. And that's her song. Oh, God has anointed you and blessed you when you sing that song. Because and that's the picture we get. But look at all the stuff that got happened. And folks say, why are you wasting all that money? Man, you lost your mind. We can do a whole lot with that money. Uh-uh, baby. Because what I've learned, the money that I've got, I'm sowing into God, that money never runs out. Come on now. That hope never runs out. That love never runs out. That joy never runs out. Everything else runs out. Come when you God's feet, it never runs out. And I pray today that every one of you, under the sound of my voice, will learn that we're going to get there differently. There's Martha's and there's Mary's. And yet, they both were saved. And some, that's just who our nature is, and that's okay. Because I need some Martha's, and I need, I just like, personally, I just like more Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> the wife of a pastor.